Resistance, Hunger for Violence Extravaganza. Tonight, we're going to watch the Vault Hunter take on the ravenous Waddle Gobbler. Do not allow contestants in the meat locker. Leave at once. 
we gotta choose some meat for the cobbler's meal. Turn on the tastiest looking stag corpses. This is totally gonna get me fired, and I don't care! Keep grabbing that food! <laughs> Smack the 
sure it will be your last meal. The board of directors and I can guarantee that. You know why we made the gobbler invincible, Torg? So you could kill him. After dozens of failed attempts by other contestants, you were supposed to finally kill it on camera while wielding our most expensive guns. You would have looked like a hero. Why be a hero when you can eat one? You are the dumbest person in the world. I paid several other contestants to kill you if the gobbler can, Vault Hunter. You and Torg will pay for your idiocy. Danger, mate. Here Danger, comes mate. the ravenous wild gobbler! We've replaced this creature's normal food with poison! Let's see if he notices! He took the bait! Now just don't die him. until the poison I'm takes him! him. Mr. Troy, I said, Mr. 
answer to him, wasn't that amazing? And he said, yes, it was, Grandma. Didn't you say that, High Five? You remember saying that? than my old pet rack, Bisto. Bisto was such a sweetie. You ever had a pet rack? If you could tame them, they are the sweetest pet you ever had. He used to just sit on my shoulder and bite chunks of flesh out of my bed to pass the time. I still remember the way he used to tweet to me. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> it was so cute. I had a conversation with him once. I said, Mr. Bisto, he liked being called Mr. Bisto. I feel like an aristocrat. I said, Mr. Bisto, you're looking very cute today. And he said, was my third pet rack. First I had Woody. He got hit by a train. Then I had Anita. She got shot up trying to take vengeance on the train that killed Woody. And then I found Beast though making little poops on the windmill outside our house. After Mr. Torg and I wrestled her to the ground, I did a fly pile driver off the of my couch. Got it straight as far and brought him down. We brought him in. Yes, 
the thing people don't get. You watch Echo films and they're just awful. They teach you that the only way to be with someone is just to pursue them over and over until they decide they like you. In reality, you know when you like someone almost immediately. You can't really convince somebody to fall in love with you. You just look like a stalker. But if you do things that you're interested in, like making guns that explode or killing mercenaries, then people will see that confidence and skill you have and they'll be attracted to you. There's always a fine line between that kind of confidence and narcissism, you know? There's nothing worse than somebody who wants to be famous. I remember when Mr. Torg first sold his weapons tech to that board of directors. He was pretty egocentric for a while, taking pictures of himself and posting them to the Echo Net all the time, trying to hobnob with every celebrity that used his weapons. He came back home one day with a supermodel under each arm, and I said, Mr. Torg, what are you doing? You've lost sight of who you are. It's been weeks since you actually created a new gun, I said. And it was true. Even more obsessed with being well known for doing something great than with actually doing something great. It was a dark point in my life. Thankfully, Hi Five listened to me and got to work on what would eventually become the Kerblaster. You a fan of the Kerblaster? That was always my favorite. That and the Flacker, which I know a lot of people hate. But there's more to combat than just brute efficiency in this old lady's eyes. Style counts for something. And there's nothing quite like filling the air with tiny little explosions. It's like a fireworks show, except the deaths aren't as sad and unexpected. Actually, that reminds me, now that you're here, I wanted to throw some ideas at you for feedback. I'm a playwright in my spare time, and I'm trying to write a story about an up-and-coming tournament fighter who tries to find love in a gladiatorial arena. And I figure you've got a lot of experience, so your feedback could really be valuable. So the way it's called, Broken Hearts and Broken Bands. I said one, fade in on an arena, just after a battle. Body parts litter the stage. A lone warrior stands in the middle of the stage. A spotlight illuminated her blood stained her. She's a broken heart, so I'm trying to make me alive. Of the 
governor's house. And the team was sitting here. Jesus. Oh, it's right. I didn't even ask you for the feedback on the first scene. Did you like it? Oh, wonderful. I'll continue. Scene two. The governess enters from stage one. Governess. I refuse to respond to these absurd accusations. Her husband looks at her quizzically. Governor. And what accusations may those be? Governess. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to get feedback on the play yet. But well, what about you? What are you up to? Tell Grandma Flexington all about it. I bet you've had some amazing adventures. Mr. Tor told me about the time you all played bunkers and badasses together. He said it was one of the most fun and welcoming experiences of his life. to make friends at school when he had facial hair at age eight, pecs at eight and a half, and dead parents by age nine. People found him intimidating, but I told him that he should be thankful for the fact that he looks different. Anyone who wouldn't be friends with you based on appearance wouldn't be a very good friend anyway. But he really does like hanging out with all of you. Most of the days went to work to pose for pictures or blow something up by flexing at it. It's not often he gets to sit down and play games. simulation about exploring a log cabin you lived in when you were a kid. There's no violence or anything. You just walk around looking at cereal boxes and remembering people you made out with. I really like where Echo has gone in the past few years, don't you? There seem to be a lot more of them with interesting things to do beyond shooting people. And the writing has gotten so tight inside. For instance, did you ever play the Samurai's Marker? The whole game's story was delivered through haiku. Did Zero write it or something? <laughs> no, I'm just guessing. I know you're too busy for that. But oh yeah, I was playing at the end of the point and gun last night on my Echo Sim player, and whap, it's that. It's about a guy who punches people and smacks himself in the face with doors. <laughs> Easily one of the best punch-related comedy sims ever. But oh, I'm really looking forward to this game called Robot Hunter Assault Squadron, which is this big randomized survival game about throwing bottles at trees and accidentally scaring birds. In the demo version, I scared a bird so hard it died. 10 out of 10 if I go. But what kind of things do you do for fun? You play any sports? You look like you might be in some of the more extreme stuff, like spine hurling or psycho head volleyball. I knew an athlete a lot like you when I was younger. Her name was Nijo, and she was especially gifted at the giblet toss. That's an old pastime we had back when I was younger. Idea was you punch a continent and then see how far you could make their viscera fly across the big field. You got points based on distance and the size of it. She won the final round of the giblet toss championship by getting a left eyeball to cross the 300 meter mark. They said she was juicing with iridium, but I think they were just angry that she dethroned the reigning champ, misogynistic Jim. You really liked him for some reason. Hey, what's your favorite food? My burgers, burgers. People look at you like you're a celeb or something when you say you like burgers, but just think of all the things you can do with them. You can change out the patty, play around with the toppings, change what sides you have. You ever have a burger with veggie chips? Gosh, I all but forgot about fries for about a year after I discovered the veggie chip combo. <laughs> and I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but those veggie patties they make on the more upper-class world are crazy good. Better than real meat if you cook it right. Mr. Tor tried to be vegetarian once after he saw a fluff bear get run over by a truck. How long did you last again? But to each his own. Taste is a funny thing. People say your taste buds get more refined as time goes on, but they actually get worse and worse. So when Mr. Tor used to refuse vegetables as a kid, it's because he was actually tasting how awful they were. When we old folks eat vegetables, we're only okay with it because we can't taste all the gross vitamins and stuff. Granted, vitamins are what have kept me going for as long as I'm going. You get enough meat well in your system and you can what a freight train does. Never mind me, I need to get my bills ready for the rest of the week. I have one of those little down containers.
are split into different sections for each day. It's really helpful. And the sides are sharp enough that I can use it to ward off burglars if I need to. What else do we have to do? Yes. Probably head to the bazaar, pick up some frozen spiders. I am. Gotta bring my coat, though, because it gets kind of chilly in the freezer section. What else do we have? Oh, I need Schwartzman's candy drops. Gosh, those are delicious. They're so smooth and sweet. Just thinking about them, I could go for them right now. Couldn't you? Do you think you could go find me one?